The Chicago Sky have now finalized their roster ahead of their season opening game that goes down tomorrow. We're going to take a look at the Sky's final roster and also go over some of the biggest questions ahead of the Sky as we go forth into the season. We're going to do all that, plus go around the W for some news, all that and more right after this. Welcome to Chicago Sky Central, and here's your host, Hayes. What's going on, Sky fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Sky Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Sky related. Me and Steve-O in the building today. Steve-O, we are the day before the season opener for the Chicago Sky it goes down on the 15th. I'm really excited about this game. Uh, we open the season against the Dallas Wings. I think our first two games are against Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that said, I know we, we uh, released an emergency video after the, the roster was finalized, uh, but... How do you feel about the final roster for the Chicago Sky, the balance of it? And just to go over what that final roster is, of course, you got uh, you got Marina Mabry, Isabel Harrison, Kaiser, Dana Evans, Michaela Oniwerde, Angel Reese, Brianna Turner, Elizabeth Williams, Diamond DeShields, Shields, Kennedy Carter, Camila Cardoso, <laughs> and Lindsey Allen as your final roster for the Chicago Sky. Um, first thing I got to say is versatility. Like We keep preaching versatility, versatility all over here. Um, we got the height that we've been wanting. Um, I think we was like we said coming into this season, we was lacking height and um defenders in the hole, and now we got that. We got over three to four, six, three uh players here, which is di- what we didn't have last year. And on top of that, we got some high scoring guards and some guards that could play multiple positions and guard multiple positions. So that's what I like. He got a nice blend of speed and uh, savviness. Like you got Lindsey Allen, who's a, a known veteran, can score when she needs to, play wake when she needs to. You got Kaiser, who's the young girl. She can gun, come in guns away, do what she needs to do. You got Diamond, who can play one through four if you want to. And um, Izzy, who could do the same thing as well. So it's, it's just a lot of versatility you can do with this team. And uh, I like it. Um, I, of course, me personally, I'm already thinking of stuff we can approve on, but like I just like for what we had in the beginning of this season when everything with that news job with Kai, we didn't know where it was going to. I like the way they shaped this roster out and they had a vision and they completed it. Yeah, exactly. I, I like the roster. I, I like the balance. Of course, you know, we're starting off with, with Camilla uh, uh, not healthy, unfortunately, but we still got more than enough, right? And I, I love the fact that we have a team full of people that all have that chip on their shoulder. These ladies are going to compete and they're going to compete hard. You don't doubt the motor of anybody on this team. And so, you know, those are teams that you can really bet on. And the defensive versatility of this team is the thing I'm most excited to see as well. Um, can they keep up? Can do? Will they have enough shooting to help add spacing for their bigs is another big question there but overall I, I feel really good about this roster both for the present and for the future when you look at having camilla you look at having angel mm-hmm. dana evans even kennedy these are all very young women who are still at the the start of their career in a lot of ways uh for the for the latter two there so really excited about uh what that's going to be uh for this team and i'm just excited to get started and see uh, we got a little bit of taste of what that play style is going to be for this team. I think it's still going to evolve over time for sure, but I'm really excited to see uh, what this team is going to turn into. And that kind of brings us to the to the questions that I want to ask that are really ahead of this team, right? So I don't know, uh, Steve, if you've kind of looked at it. I've looked at a lot of the different power rankings, ESPN, Bleacher Report, CBS Sports. Uh, a lot of these outlets have power rankings, and they either have the sky at 10, 11, or 12. It's basically where it fluctuates at bottom of the league when you look at this team defying the expectations do you think that this could be a team that can that can be better than what many of the outlets are expecting the chicago sky to be this season almost definitely because uh, of course especially in the modern game now they always think that offensively you have to be one of the top offensive teams in the league in order to be some of those best teams and that's just simply not the case we always know during the history of basketball defense can lead to uh, points. And if you play defense a certain way, which we have seen that little taste of, that's what got us into points. And not only that, I think people are very undervaluing the scoring aspects that we have on this team. A lot of these girls can score. Uh, Like you said, a lot of these girls got a lot of chips on their shoulders. A lot of them are former big names that people kind of lost their way on because they didn't make teams or something happened where they didn't work out in the organization they was before. So, I think a lot of it is really just undervaluing the uh, officer presence that we already currently have, but I don't think they're putting into perspective of the defense that's going to transition to points because 
it's a difference between being a good defensive team, but it's a difference between being de- good defensively and you're active as well. Because def- good teams that is good defensively and they're active, they good on the transition. They good on getting steals. They not just challenging and getting rebounds. So if you're getting turnovers, if you're causing turnovers, you're getting steals. On top of that, you're making the shots, and we have the scores to do so. We definitely can look better than what, especially us. They think if we're gonna be last, like we're not gonna be fucking last. So, uh, I think I, a lot of it is just very undervaluing what we have, and maybe putting in just a little bit too much credit and less losing Kai and Courtney Williams. Yeah, and and I, I and I agree with that. I think, and also having Coach Spoon here is going to be something that really mm-hmm. helps us defy those expectations. So you know, I, I get why, considering the change, considering the turnover in the front office, the coaching staff, the roster, we've had we've had change in every level of the franchise. It's kind of hard for you know outlets to kind of expect that team, expect the team that's gone through that much change to r- really you know be be really good during the season. But I love the energy that we have around this team. I love the fight of this team, like I said earlier. And so I, I don't think this team is going to be at the bottom of the league. They have no incentive to be as well. We don't own our own first round pick next season. So this is a team that needs to go out, leave it all out on the court, compete, fight, and then whatever the wherever the chips fall is where the chips fall. But I think that the uh the, this Chicago Sky team is going to make a lot of a lot of people kind of turn their heads and make them realize, hey, you slept on us. Don't keep doing yeah. it. Uh, or you can keep doing it if you want. You're probably going to be on the wrong side of that, right? And so, you know, part of that is the, is Coach Spoon. And so when you look at the uh, – we talked a little bit about the roster. What do you expect from Coach Spoon going into this season, Steve-O? Um, I'm actually expecting a lot of things from her, not only because, like, I think – a lot of us coming in, like you see the rookies and the young people that we come in and the young players that's coming in, and we think she has a lot to develop, not realizing that we have a nice split of the veteran leadership on this team. So I don't think it's going to be as difficult as people might say. I don't think it's going to be that much development as people might think she has to. I think this year is basically setting the foundation of winning and a winning culture. So Whenever we, we talk about the sky, everybody know what's coming. They know what they have to plan for. They know what it's going to have to be. They know how they're going to have to play. So I think it's going to be a lot of defensive rotations that I'm looking at. I'm going to look at – um, really, I'm looking at the type of uh, personal relationship, bonding moments that she builds throughout her um, her tenure here. We already know that she's having a really good in, in fe- uh, effect on Dana Evans. We know she had a little um personal issues coming in. She said – Coach Spoon was with her, and yeah. it's it's good to feel. And we even heard it with Camilla and Angel how they felt like it's almost like a mom figure there. Like she cares about them outside of the game of basketball. And on my own experience, when you have coaches like that, they can lay in your ass in a certain type of way where that is the player would accept it more, and they can get challenged way better. So it's only going to make the team better. So I feel like she's going to challenge a lot of player uh, players. When Camilla comes back, she's going to challenge her as well because if we know anything about her, she needs to be challenged because sometimes she gets hard on herself and she can't do that in this league. You're going to go up against great centers every night. So I'm really looking to what, what she has more of a as a person to come out on these players than a coach because I already know the X's and O's. She got it off real. For sure, for sure. Um, I, I, Teresa Weatherspoon is one of the reasons I feel most confident because she's going to put these players in the best situation. I love that she's talked about like her history of being a point guard, it, it, how it helps her as a coach, and I think that that's valid as well. So, you know, her her kind of figuring out what everybody likes uh, to be, how they like to be used, I think is going to be a, a big thing in this team as the story goes on over the course of the season. I can't wait to see how it's going to develop because I think it's going to it's going to be fun, fun, fun to watch. I think for sure uh, with this team and just seeing how these ladies really, you know, fight for Coach Spoon. That's something as well that we that you need to look at. They're going to fight for Spoon. They're going to believe in her because they she believes in them. And I think that that's the best asset that you have right now for this yep. guy team. Um, now we we know that we have questions, right? As far as like players like Camilla and uh, and Angel Reese, seeing how they develop over the season. I'm going to throw something to you. Uh, Steve-O, that I think not a lot of people have talked about also, but in a lot of ways, I think Marina Mabry is in a similar situation that Kalia Copper was to last season. I think a lot of uh, that the Sky, the, the franchise, and as well as people around, we need to be watching to see if Marina Mabry actually develops into a superstar 
on this type of team. As much as Angel and Camilla are going to be the stars of this team going forward, I think Marina Mabry also has a chance, especially as a two-way player and and a, and a score in this league, to really turn into a star in this league over, over this season because everything's kind of going to kind of be on her to start to start off with. You're right. Offensive. A lot of people... A lot of people hasn't been talking about that, and we can officially say this is her team. Like, yeah. this is the first time that she's been handed the keys to a franchise for real. She's going to have the ultimate green light, something she's never had before. And we've seen that in multiple sports. When you give that, when you given that opportunity, that's the time to show that you could be that superstar. And we already know the type of play she plays. She shoots like crazy. She can she, she she her playing style is of today's game, pick and roll, pick and pop, um, reading the screens, um, pulling up on transition, as well as that. So she's gonna she's she's she could put herself in position where she could average upwards of 25 points a game. And it could put her in the conversation as well as being a superstar, and it could also put in the conversation as being in the MVP conversation, which can help alongside being in the city of Chicago which a lot of people going to ride with it with. So I'm expecting an all-star game. I'm expecting possibly MVP um, thing because she has the talent. Like, she's one of the best shot creators that's in this game right now. So it's definitely something we should be looking out, looking at. <clears throat> Her also playing some of the point guard roles. She can relate <clears throat> with um, our Coach Teaspoon so she can learn from her as well. So alongside with Dana, it, it, everything around her, like I said, is the first time ever when she's given the green light for real, and this is her chance to really show what she got. And she she showed her ass out last year. I can only know what she's going to do this year. Facts. And then you got to look at players like we have a – I know I said chip on their shoulders, but we have a lot of players that are, that are out to prove something this year, and I'm going to throw this to you. Uh, you got Kennedy Carter, who after, you know, not being in the league last year, getting kicked off a team before, um, she has a lot to prove this year. Diamond the Shields, and, and her, can she stay healthy and get back to the player, the dynamic player that she was previously? Michaela Oniwerde, right? The, a rookie of the year that many people look at as probably one of the more disappointing rookie of the years in the last five years for the WNBA. She has tons to, uh, tons to prove as well. And then you got Dana Evans, the player that's been here, that Sky fans have been talking about for so long, saying that if she gets a chance to really let loose, we think that she could be a star. Uh, uh, Coach mm-hmm. Witherspoon has said that Dana can do everything out on the court. She trusts Dana to be an extension of herself out there. Dana Evans is also going to have the green light. When you look at those ladies and kind of being a, for lack of a better term, the re- a, a, a redeemed team in, of sorts for the Chicago Sky this year, who do you think is going to have the best season out of those ladies, Steve-O? Um, I think it's going to be Dana, but it's not going to be because of points. And I think she also realized that as well. She, you know, we watched her overseas and for the most part, she's over there trying to get buckets and that's what they're requiring her to do. So she knows as soon as she get back over to where she's from in America, it's time to lock in on defense. And she knows the pick, the the point guard world is more vivid over here, especially in this organization. So I think you're going to see her impact the game more in terms of, Good decision being made, big shots, um, getting everybody involved, possibly furting with double doubles and stuff like that. I think that's where you're gonna get in, and you're not gonna get a like a super like you're gonna definitely gonna get a a, a nice uptick in her points because she's starting now and she's uh, everybody knows she's a bucket when she gets to run in, she going on, especially going on that right side to the hole. You're not stopping her, she getting to the lane at all times. So I think it's just she's going to impact the game more. The game goes slow down for her more, especially with having Lindsay Allen as a vet to lean on who done all that before. And then she has the ultimate confidence and from her coach to get it as well. She's just going to be the all-time leader. She's going to be the, the big dog of this team. She's going to – everybody's going to turn to her when, it's, when things need to be calmed down, when – Everybody needs that bucket. She's going to make sure, okay, it's time for her to get the bucket and, and that and so on. So I think it's going to be Dana and possibly the next person I think might be Michaela. I think it's going to mm-hmm. be Michaela as well because she, one thing about her, she don't take disrespect lightly. People were sagging off on her when she came in the league and she worked on a shot and now she got a respectable shot. So she's she's shown that she worked hard. She shows that she constantly working on her game. So who knows how much better she's over this summer coming into this season. So 
Um, I'm expecting big things for her. I'm, I'm expecting a lot of big minutes to be given to her by Coach Spoon. So um, I'm, I think Michaela Odoretta is going to be the second one to look out for. Yeah, Michaela is somebody that, like I said, I, I, I don't think she's going to be like this 12 point. And it doesn't matter, right? But I, I could see yeah. her making the right plays, right? When we look at, when we go back and look at some games, like, hey, did you see that defensive stop there? She's going to go mm -hmm. hard after rebounds. She's going to fight for loose balls. She's going to get steals. She's going to, she, you can't slap, sag off on her def, uh, defensively because she can put points up. I'm not, not saying she's going to yeah. score 25 on you, but. If you if you think you're gonna sag off of Michaela to guard to double team some other players, leave her open if you want to. I guarantee you, you're gonna end up regretting it. So I like that pick as well. Mm -hmm. I think Michaela is has a lot to prove uh, this year as well, and having a former Rookie of the Year that has that uh, chip on her shoulder is gonna be big. I'm looking, Steve O. Kennedy Carter. I think she's gonna be a microwave off the bench for this team. And I don't mean that just because of offensively scoring a bunch of points, but I look at her as going to be somebody who's going to come off. She can play the one, two. You can even play at some small ball three, depending on what you do in some other places, but probably mainly the one and two. If you have her and Dana out there together, together yeah, that's a small backcourt. But I tell you what, if they're pushing that's the tra price. pushing transition, I don't know how many teams are going to be able to run with those ladies. So I, I, I really look at Kennedy Carter as well as somebody who I think, keep in mind, this is somebody who scored 17 points per game in this league prior. She can score. I would not be surprised okay. if the sky do better than what people are expecting them. Kennedy Carter could be in six woman of the year conversation, I think. Yeah, because she's hard to guard. She's yeah. faster than most of everybody on the court. She's probably going to be the fast player on the court. And her and Dana got like, their, their play style besides the playmaking part is pretty much similar. They're going to go try to go through you every single time. And they're nasty with it. They don't care. They're going to talk shit. They're going to be aggressive. So I, I agree with you. She could definitely be the sixth man of the year because, hey, there ain't going to be too many people on the bench that's going to be able to check her. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, but really excited about this team. I think this is going to be a team that a lot of uh, Sky fans are going to be proud of with the way that they compete. Um, and we'll see how that develops over time. And the fact that we're going to get Camila Cardoso back after a month, a month into the season of a four month uh -huh. season. Yeah, we do have the long break in there as well. Uh, the Olympic break this year. This, this Y'all can keep sleeping on the Chicago Sky if you want to. I think they're going to make a lot of people regret it when this year's all said and done. Um, anything left in this? Anything left with the sky before we go uh, around some uh, news from around the general WNBA? No, nah, let's go straight to it. Let's get it. So we got announced today the, the name of the Golden State Warriors team, um, <coughs> which they uh, are going to be the Golden State Valkyries. Uh, they, the new logo is nice. They're going to have a black and purple color scheme uh, as well. Uh, what do you think about that name, uh, Steve-O? It's better names than I've heard in other uh, sports things of recent days. Like, it's better than the Commanders. It's better than the Galaxy. Uh, besides, it's better, it's better than some current names, like, to be honest. So, it's marketable. It's a marketable name. Um, people, if you know the history of Vikings and Warriors, you should know what a Valkyrie is. So, um, I just think, and plus, I think I, I was a little bit worried that they was kind of going to do what uh, – uh, Mercury did and uh, kind of like keep it in the family with the same colors and logo. Yeah. I didn't really want them to do that. I'm kind of glad that they're going with their own brand, their own colorway uh, to separate themselves. So I like it. Um, it's cool. Yeah, I, I, and it's and it's a different color scheme than than a lot. A lot of the teams in the W have blue. You'll see a lot of different shades mm -hmm. of blue all throughout the W. So they go on black and purple. Uh, a little bit different there. I, I I like that. Um, and we'll see, man. Like this is the, the fact that we're gonna we mean you're gonna have an expansion draft to talk about is gonna be crazy. I can't wait to see what that how that yeah, ends up working out. Crazy. Yeah, that's gonna be crazy to see. But um, yeah, I I think it's a really good strong name. Uh, the team's gonna we're gonna have one year of odd teams and then we're the the Toronto team's gonna join. I can't wait to see what they name that team because uh yeah, please yeah but we'll is but I did have to say did it kind of the logo kind of look Kobe-ish to you? Yeah, it does. It definitely looks like the Kobe logo. It looks a lot like the Kobe logo, actually. Now that's that why I that. really like it. It yeah. looked like Kobe. So like I don't know if that was a little nod or whoever designed that was a little Kobe fan, but isn't, I like it. It's real nice. I like the little um. I don't, did you see the little video when it's like it shows like the purple with the sun and then the yeah. wings come? That's cold. The, and they had it narrated by uh, Kalani. Like it was like, is she from that area? Because why'd you pick her? Hmm. I don't know. 
I mean, she she do got one of the dopest voices in real she voices. She has a great voice. It was just I just didn't expect Kelani to be the one voicing a WNBA right. team announcing their uh their arrival. I mean, well, announcing their team name. So it is what it is. There was it was a great a great pre presentation. All that to announce the name. I think that that's really solid uh, as well. I'm trying to. Oh yes, you're from Oakland. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Then I take back what yeah. I said. So it makes complete yeah. sense that they had her do it then. Um, yeah. But yeah, anything else, uh, Steve-O, from around the W? I was going to ask you, did you get the chance to see Kalia Copper's comments and how she kind of threw the Sky organization under the bus? I did not. <laughs> so I'm going to read what? this quote to you, man. Uh, it, it was, Listen, I understand it, though. She said this, from an organizational standpoint, I have everything I need. All I have to worry about is being the best version of myself on the court, and that is all that I should have to worry about. Uh, as you pour into your players, you get what you put in. I think that this organization has done for me. I don't have to worry about food. That is something I shouldn't have to worry about, uh, whether it be before practice or after practice. I know I'm taken care of. So I think uh, from an athlete standpoint, for where I am in my career, I'm so grateful to be part of an organization like this. I took it as her being surprised at all the resources that 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 team has as being the Mercury have as, as being owned by an NBA team. It is very different. But I've seen mm -hmm. some people on social media take it as was this a little dig at the Chicago Sky organization, especially looking at how they've handled like media day and other things like that this offseason, where I think it's just right now it's a good time to kind of pile on the negatives of the Chicago Sky organization. But how'd you take that, Steve? I mean, I'm I'm kind of with you. Like I kind of understand where she's coming from because it's like we don't have an NBA team backing us with that money. So mm -hmm. And that's why I kind of look at her because, like, if you surprised, I don't know why you surprised. You got an NBA team backing you. You got money coming in, so like, you have help. So they have no reason not to do this. But um, I think uh, just saying statements like that is is going to help the league realize. Okay, you need to get everybody. Need to get you need to hold these organizations accountable. Like Chicago, mm. we we got our own gripes with us whole organization. They got their cheap ways at times. So, um. Yeah, I guess it was a little dig, but you shouldn't feel no type of way about it. Like, I, as a fan, I should say, you shouldn't feel no type of way about it. Um, she, she, as we know, even now, like, even the team currently is hearing. We heard Teresa and Angel talking about, "Hey, we need, we got everything we need right now. We ain't mm -hmm. tripping." They know they they looking at the big picture. and They know, like, down the line, they're gonna get things together, especially with D. Way coming along as a part owner of of, of the organization. So. Yeah, as a fan, I don't think you should take uh, it too deeply. But, um, yeah, I don't know why she's so surprised. Like, you basically an NBA team over there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm, and I'm glad that Kalia's happy, right? Like like I said, like, you sign a, a max-level contract. She should be happy. She's going to get to compete over there with being with Phoenix. And the Sky just – they weren't able to put a team around her that they felt that they were going to be able to compete. This is the best route that they went. It sucks. I loved Kalia Copper. I still love Kalia Copper, and I'm still going to follow her career, and I hope she does great. I hope her and the Phoenix Suns turn a lot of heads. I'm Phoenix Mercury, turn a lot of heads um, in the WNBA this season. But at the end of the day, we know what the sky is. If you're not new to this franchise, we know. This franchise has come a long way in just a year. Uh, it has. But we got things that we need to work on. The media team needs work. The social media team, outside of whoever's doing the tweets during the game, priceless. But the social media team and other aspects need some work. Um, yeah. But I, I, like we we know we're we're a team that's out on its own. Unfortunately, the city hasn't really turned out big time for them yet. Hopefully, this changes with having the players that we have in there now. And we start seeing that this franchise with the new ownership, Dwayne Wade, you know, the other owner that came on, that it, it puts us in a position now to where we can start getting and making the moves to get to that place of being able to better support our players. So, yeah, like if anything, this whole thing should tell us up to us as fans. If we want this uh, organization to turn it around, we're going to have to let it be known. We got to get loud for the season so the city can recognize so they can make some moves. Exactly. Exactly. We got to actually support outside of just complaining on social media. Um, but any last thoughts, Steve, before we get up out of here, brother? Nah, man. I'm going to go drink some tea because my throat is <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, man. You guys can follow us at Chicago Sky Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Sky Central at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Sky related. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for the pregame show and during the game. Super excited about the season started with starting. Love you guys. Go Sky, y'all. Peace.
Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.